Recall when we were last together, I shared how in over 500 meetings over the last couple of years, listening to over 500 sessions of Q&A alone, I'm always intrigued and amazed at the number of people who are having some what we'll consider boundary issues, or they have a difficult person, or they have a challenging person in their life. And no matter how the question is uh, set up, you can always kind of weave through it. You can tell that this is some sort of boundary issue. This is some sort of difficult person. This is someone who's problematic. And when you ask the person and get to the root of it, oftentimes you realize that they really haven't had the hard conversation. And we've talked about the, the topic of avoidance. What makes avoidance so dangerous is that you get all of the negative emotions of avoiding the subject matter without any of the benefits of a potential solution. So we're engaged in this teaching series, Difficult Conversations, how to have the conversation that you have been avoiding. Now, if you recall, last time we were together, I said that we did an eight-week teaching series entitled Crazy Folks. And this was, a, this, I, I kept, first I called it difficult people, then I called it crazy folks, and I kept going back and forth, but I settled in on crazy folks. But this is a, this is a, teaching series that deals with people who don't want to accept boundaries. And, and when we were together last week, I talked about the fact that there's some people you may not even be able to have that difficult conversation with because they're not ready for it. They're not mature enough for it. They don't want to take ownership. They're not interested in, in being mature and having an adult conversation. And I said, really, the only thing you can do with those individuals is maintain boundaries maintain space. And we looked at repeatedly in the scriptures where the Bible actually instructs us to do that. In Proverbs, I believe it was Proverbs 22, it talks about how the prudent man foresees evil and avoids it. But the simple man keeps on going. In other words, once you've been down this path enough times, once you've seen someone's body language, once you see how someone responds, once you recognize that your, or the spirit bears witness that this person is not safe. They're not mature enough to have this conversation. You're not supposed to just perpetually stay in harm's way. And we looked at how Jesus, we looked at four references where Jesus, our Lord and Savior, actually avoided people who were trying to harm him. And that's so contrary because oftentimes the message we get in church or sometimes the message we take away, even though it may not be intended, is the key to our Christian life is tolerance or super long suffering. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches very clearly the importance of <coughs> maintaining boundaries, keeping yourself in, uh, at a good distance. I alluded to this last time. That's why even in the context of a marriage that's being challenged, separation is always preferable to divorce. Because when you engage in separation, now the person has to deal with the consequences of the lost relationship. And oftentimes it can cause them to change or modify or impact their behavior because the consequences cause them to realize what they've been missing. And we said, and, and in the teaching series on, on crazy folks, with certain people, we have to be careful because confrontation doesn't always cause them to change. Sometimes they just need pure consequences. And we talk about the fact that how some people, they almost get energized by the battle, energized by the argument, energized using their vernacular skills and trying to absolve themselves of responsibility and put all the blame on you. So uh, there are people who fit in that category. But tonight I want to I talk about when you have to have that difficult conversation. Part one was just to help us distinguish because I didn't want you, uh, I didn't want to jump into having the difficult conversation teaching without making you aware there's some people that you can't even have it with. If you're David, you're not going to have a difficult conversation with Saul. If you're Joseph, you're probably not going to have a difficult conversation with your brothers who are jealous of you. If you're Mordecai, you're probably not going to have that difficult conversation with Haman because he wants to kill you and produce genocide. If you're the three Hebrew boys or if you're Daniel, you're not going to have the difficult conversation with the satraps who are trying to set you up. There's some people where you just have to stay out of harm's way, so to speak. Now, you know we like to use word pictures. So 
I want you to envision a large cruiser in the ocean. Now, what's interesting, if you've ever done, been on a cruise, I've had the good ple pre uh, pleasure of speaking on cruises. If you've ever been on a cruise, what you find out if you talk to the captain is the captain sets the ship on autopilot. And the ship proceeds from, let's say, Jersey Shore to wherever, the Bahamas, Bermuda, wherever you're going, and it proceeds on autopilot towards its destination. Now, what's key about this is any time the ship encounters any type of external opposition, even if it gets thrown off course temporarily, because in its internal GPS it's been set on autopilot and cruise control, it recalibrates to keep getting itself back on track. Now this is a great word picture because no matter how many waves keep coming at the ship to try to throw it off course, it is Purpose, it has purpose in its heart to go the direction that it believes it needs to go and not go into a direction that something else is trying to lead it in. This is very, this is a great word picture because this is the exact opposite of most human beings. In other words, they know there's a direction that the ship of conversation is supposed to go. But they allow the waves of another person's response or the waves of how of their reaction. And instead of and, and when they get thrown off like you can in a difficult conversation, instead of recalibrating and saying, okay, this is your reaction, but we have to have this difficult conversation, they allow themselves to get thrown off course. Now, what's ironic about this is if they, as you know, if they had just kept pressing forward, or if you keep pressing forward even in turbulent waves, you know, after a while, you'll pass it. It's really, it's no different from when you fly. Usually, I've flown a lot, and presumably you have as well, when the pilot experiences turbulence, you rarely see him saying, okay, I'm just gonna not, we're not gonna go there. We're not going to Florida. We're not going to California. In other words, when the external opposition tries to get the plane off course, it doesn't, the pilot doesn't quit. He recalibrates and he finds the right opportunity, or he, he searches for alternate ways, but he's, he's purpose in his heart to get to the destination. And this is a great word picture of what the difficult conversation is because you have to purpose in your heart that you won't allow the other person's reaction to prevent you from staying on course. When you have a difficult, when you have to have a difficult conversation, Oftentimes, it means that there's a decision that has to be made. There's a value that's not being respected. There may be injury or wound that they're inflicting on themselves or you. But when you have to have that difficult conversation, one of the first things you need to do is purpose in your heart that you're not going to allow their reaction to throw you off. Because generally speaking, when you have to have that difficult conversation, and if you're having it with a challenging person, oftentimes their response is going to be in anger. And we said, this is why this teaching is so critical, with the challenging, difficult person, they use three tools to try to derail you or get you off course. They use anger, they use guilt, and they use manipulation. So for using our ship metaphor, you can't be, I can't be afraid of getting a little wet because I have to have that conversation. So we're talking about difficult conversations, how to have that conversation you've been avoiding. We're talking about the fact that when you recognize and you settle down that you're going to have this conversation, you don't confuse this, this is big, the subject matter and the person's response. You don't commingle them. They're, they're two separate things. The subject matter is one point, the person's response is the other. 